today, I am going to talk to you about this molecule, NAD. So it's something that's found in every single cell in your body. It's involved in over 500 different reactions, and without it, you would literally be dead in 30 seconds. It's really important for how you age. So the reason for this is because your NAD levels exponentially decline as you get older. So when you're young, up here, you have really, oh, excuse me, you have really high levels. But as you get older and you get to these ages, your levels have pretty much dropped through the floor, and that's not good. And the reason it's not good is that this decrease in NAD actually correlates with the symptoms of aging. And to understand why low NAD levels are linked to aging, you need to look at what it's actually doing in the cell. Because what NAD does is it basically acts as a signal to switch on a lot of our maintenance and repair processes. So when you've got high levels of NAD, you've got all these things switched on. You've got increased mitochondrial function, activation of your longevity genes. You get decreased inflammation. You get DNA repair going on. So when you're young and you've got really high levels of NAD, all of these repair and maintenance pathways are, are literally switched on to the max, making sure that your cells are all in good health. But as you get older and these NAD levels start to decrease, you then find that they start to get turned down. And this has been implicated in the reason that we get the symptoms of aging. So what actually causes our NAD levels to decline? Because it's well publicized that it does decline, but why is this actually happening in our cells as we age? Now, to understand this, first you need to get a good understanding of exactly how young cells make NAD. So I just want to show you this picture. So this is a, a very simplified version of a cell. And the first thing that I want you to take note of is the fact that NAD here is actually a very big molecule in terms of molecular size, OK? So one of the problems with NAD is that it finds it really difficult to actually pass across the cell membrane intact. So to get around this problem, what cells have done is they've evolved to basically be able to make NAD inside the cell where it is actually needed. So what they do is they essentially transport the raw materials or the raw ingredients that make NAD into the cell. It then enters enzymatic pathways, which then basically turn this, these raw materials into NAD. Once you've got the NAD in the cell, you find all those maintenance and repair proteins and processes, start using it all up, and then this converts the NAD into a waste product called nicotinamide, which is abbreviated here as NAM. In young cells, what you find is that this nicotinamide is then very, very efficiently recycled via a pathway called the salvage pathway, and basically it converts this waste product back into useful NAD. And this is the enzyme that's responsible for this pathway. So in our young cells, the majority of our NAD is actually made in this way. So it's not relying on precursors coming in and making it. It's actually relying on efficient recycling of the nicotinamide. That's the waste product. So what goes wrong in our cells as we get older? Why does it actually start to go down? Well, there's two main reasons for this. And the first reason is basically that older cells just simply use up more NAD. They have got more damage in them. They've got more inflammation. They just need more repair. So all of those repair and maintenance pathways that I showed you before are basically switched on full, and your cells just using up NAD like there's no tomorrow. Now, right at a time when your cell's using all this NAD and it's producing a lot of this waste nicotinamide, this would be fine if your cells had a youthful recycling capacity and all this nicotinamide was simply getting made straight back into NAD, but that's the second problem. So in older cells, the efficiency of this pathway here, the salvage pathway, actually goes down. And the reason it actually goes down is because of the decline of this enzyme. So there's a lot of scientific evidence now to show that this enzyme reduces as you get older. 
This means that older cells do not have this youthful recycling capacity that they once did. So it means that at a time when your cells are actually using up more NAD and they could do with more recycling, they just simply don't have it, and you get a deficit. So this is why your NAD levels actually decline. But the good news is, is that if you can restore your NAD to youthful levels, it's been shown that you can actually dramatically reverse aging and improve your health span. There are numerous benefits now coming daily in scientific publications that show the benefits of actually boosting your NAD. And these include things, things such as rejuvenation of old tissues, you get an increased DNA repair, you get a restoration of your mitochondrial function and old cells, restoration of muscle function, improvement in cognitive function. There's loads of stuff, and what this shows is that by boosting your NAD levels, you can't really go wrong. So we want to all boost our NAD, right? Well, because you're all here, I think you already know that there are some ways that you can do it. So one of the main ways is actually IV infusions of NAD. So this is a pure IV infusion of pure NAD. Another way is to supplement with precursors. So these are like the raw materials that your cell needs to make NAD. And the common ones that you'll know of are nicotinamide, riboside, and NMN. But the problem is, these methods actually have limitations. And the main limitation of both these methods is that they're quite inefficient ways of boosting your NAD. So if you want to get the, your NAD levels back up to rejuvenation levels, they probably aren't going to cut it. So to explain this, I just want to take you back to the cell, OK? So remember, one of the first things that I said was that NAD is a big molecule. So if you get an IV infusion of pure NAD, the problem is you might get it through the gut intact, you might get it into the blood, but there is very limited evidence to show that you can actually get it through into the cells where it is actually needed. Now, on the other hand, precursors, they have a slightly different problem, okay? So they are actually small enough to pass into the cell where they're needed so they can enter the pathways and be converted into NAD. And this means that you do get a boost in your NAD levels. And on average, this is around a 40 to 60% boost in NAD using precursor supplements. But the problem with precursor supplementation is it's not actually addressing any of the reasons why your NAD is actually declining. So your NAD is not declining because your cells don't have enough precursor to make into NAD. It's declining because they've become less efficient at making and recycling NAD. It's declining because they're using more NAD up. So I like at this point to kind of get everyone to think of the cell as a factory, okay? So if the enzymatic pathways are basically the production line in the factory, and you've got the precursor, which is like the raw material that's getting shipped into the factory, and this production line has become old, the machines aren't working, there's, pro there's product literally leaking out of the pipes. What do you think would be the best way to try and increase production in this factory? Do you think it would just be to simply increase the shipment of more steel or whatever into the factory and hope that more cars come out the other end? No, that's just not going to work. It just doesn't make sense. It's literally just going to pile up at the door because this production line literally can't cope with it anymore. And this is exactly the same principles as precursor supplementation because you're not addressing the underlying reasons why your NAD is declining with age. You're not addressing the fact that it's the cells are using up more, the fact that its cells have become inefficient at making and recycling NAD. So what this tells us is that if we really want to boost your NAD, then you've got to address the underlying reasons why your NAD is actually declining. In other words, we need to use a multi-targeted approach. We need to fix that salvage pathway. We need to make the cells more efficient again at making NAD. We need to stop them using up so much. Now, this sounds great, but in reality, 
multi-target combinations of interventions are quite hard to actually design, okay? So at Nichido, what we do is we specialize in finding high-impact multi-target combinations of ingredients, and we use a process known as systems pharmacology. And this is a method that's used in drug discovery to identify active molecules that are much more efficient. So at Nichido, we've basically used this approach to identify high-impact combinations of ingredients that are designed to boost NAD. So instead of using a single-target approach like a precursor, what we've done is we've used a multi-targeted approach that basically fixes the underlying reasons why your NAD is declining. It's fixing the salvage pathway. It's stopping your NAMPT enzyme from going down. It's stopping your cells from wasting NAD. So I'm sure you all want to know, does it actually work? <laughs> I've gone on about it. Can I show you some results? So that's what I'm going to spend the last couple of minutes showing you. So, first of all, one of the first experiments we did, we took a combination of ingredients that was designed using this approach. It was designed to fix the underlying reasons why your NAD declines with age. Now, the important thing to mention for this experiment is that we use no precursor whatsoever. This was simply trying to get the cells to become and to basically switch back on their youthful capacity to make NAD. And what we found is that when we give it to a male 57 years old, we measured the NAD levels in his blood before and after over a seven-day period, you can see that you were getting a 70% increase above baseline. Okay? So this isn't that huge. But what it is comparable to is NR. So this is a double dose of NR. This is 1,000 milligrams, and you get a 92% increase above your baseline. We have achieved nearly that with no precursor. This is just by fixing the problems in your cells, OK? So then the next question that we were at, wanted to ask was obvious. What happens if we add a precursor to this as well? So that's what we did. So this time, we added a precursor. But we didn't use expensive NR. We didn't use expensive NMN. We simply used nicotinamide, because that's what the cell is good at actually recycling. And then we started to get results that looked like this. NAD levels were through the roof, OK? So what it shows is if you really want to boost your NAD levels, you need to do more than one thing. You've got to have a multi-targeted approach. So we wanted to see what was actually going on inside the cells. Why were we getting such large increases in an NAD? So we looked at the rate-limiting enzyme that declines with age in your salvage pathway. We looked at NAMPT. And you can see in the baseline blood samples of this person, you could barely detect the levels of NAMPT in this person. After taking the cocktail for 16 days, look at its expression. It's really gone up. And this is why we believe we're getting such good increases in your NAD levels. The other thing we wanted to look at was actually, you know, NAD, you want to have your levels go up, but it's not actually NAD that's having the beneficial effects. It's the things that NAD is switching on. For example, your sirtuins, the longevity genes. So we wanted to show that not only could you boost NAD levels, but you can actually switch on these beneficial downstream effects. So here I show you an example of sirtuin expression. Again, barely detectable in the baseline blood samples. Over the course of the treatment, the expression of SIRT1 increases. So I hope I've shown to you all today that interventions to enhance your NAD are not limited to precursor supplementation. In fact, you can get a far greater increase in your NAD levels if you use these types of multi-targeted approaches.